Australia is recognized both by rich arid countries and poor arid countries as being the world leader in water management in an arid environment. The great proof of this has been uh, how you managed to deal with the drought from 2000 to 2007 with uh, reductions in water availability of something like 50 percent and very little impact on the economy actually using that water. This is because you have uh, developed over the last 30 years very strong institutions that are able to manage the scarcity. And it's for this reason that countries from around the world, rich countries like the United States and Spain, poor countries like India, Pakistan, China, Mexico, all want to come to Australia to see how you did that. You've done both the institutional side and then together with that, there's been major advances in Australia on the technology side. Now it turns out that the rains have come, but those desalination plants are telling all the major cities on the coast, and potentially those like, you know, in, inland potentially, such as Canberra, and they could have the Kalgoorlie solution. You can pipe water. And desal means that the metropolitan areas with most people in them are capable of having water supply safely and secure for an indefinite future. That means water need not be an obstacle to long-term population growth. And the computer technology can identify a particular piece of fruit in the orchard or a bunch of grapes so that we can manage the irrigation to uh, follow the size of the growth of the apple or the bunch of grapes so that we're using plant parameters that control the value of the fruit um, and get the maximum value for least water. And in apples, for example, a juicing apple is worth two cents an apple and an eating apple is worth over 30 cents and even up to 40 cents for the high quality apples. So irrigating to the size of the apple so that you get uniform growth uh, will produce much better apples and a greater proportion of eating apples, high quality eating apples. The release of water to irrigation channels can now be monitored very carefully and made responsive to the amount of water that's already arrived, to the rainfall, the probability of future rainfall. All this can happen and this greatly increases the productivity of water. So this is a real opportunity for Australia. And I think the critical question there is not to cast this as a water saving problem, but to cast it as an opportunity to invest in equipping the irrigation and agricultural community to really move up in the productivity uh, game so that Australia remains at the forefront. And I bet in 30 years time, you'll look back and you'll say, if Australia does that and we get the water economy aligned with this, it's gonna be an act that's gonna be declared that was a great strategic foresight to do this. We do, even with a 40% reduction in our water entitlements, still do have a substantial amount of water uh, for high value produce. Um, in the past, we've had a supply-led philosophy. Let's build a dam and then we'll work out what to do with the water. Now it would be much better to look at the emerging food markets and grow what's required for those markets in a cost competitive way. Professor Briscoe, Professor Langford, um, Ken Matthews and I will be independently assessing the sorts of reports that will be useful to government. But we'll be drawing on the technical expertise of companies, of irrigation communities, of reg regional governments, of all sorts of experts, so that we can bring together an agenda for reform and a, a pattern of potential change that really can help Australia to remove water as a major risk to a growing, prospering and greater Australia. I think one of the most exciting things happening in the last five years is a group of uh, private companies who were previously uh, unengaged with the water business have realized that water is on the one hand a threat to their social license to operate unless there's a good legal regulatory management system in, in place they will no longer be able to operate their industries and so this has brought a lot of companies in the oil industry the extractive industries uh, textiles pulp and paper beverages to the table to say 
that we need as collectively as the private sector to get engaged with helping governments improve the way in which they manage water. What we're saying to corporate Australia and to, the, to local governments in Australia is that if you have expertise, if you have expertise in the water companies, we'd like you to join with this project, maybe to help sponsor some of the work, to be in some of our industry committees so that we are certain that we have the best available information before we write the sort of reports that could be the basis for future policy.